members of the public. Uh, welcome to tonight's meeting of the Constituency Committee uh, for West Wirral. Um, as committee clerk, it's my pleasure uh, to speak. I don't normally speak, so bear with me. Um, as I have, the first item on the agenda is the appointment of the chair and vice chair for the municipal year. So I'm going to ask or seek the nominations for the chair of the committee, committee for this year. May I propose yeah, Councillor yeah. Jeff Green, please? Um, Second, right? Seconded, yes. Any other nominations? Do we have a say in this? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. This is a, 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 a private meeting held in public. So it's, the, it's the members of the panel, <coughs> members of the committee that actually select the chair. Those in favour and those, oh, we're going to have those in favour and those against. We normally do that. Yes. So you better do that. <laughs> Still find your president. Okay. Uh, would members please show show hands in support? Oh, gosh, uh, that's nice. So thank you, colleagues, for your continued confidence. Um, uh, I know um, we've got a few. Of Apologies, and we've also got one or two that need desperately to get away, and I thank them for uh, making the time to come along in the first place. So, uh, the next item on the agenda I've got is the election of Vice Chairman, and can I uh, propose from the Chair, Councillor John Hale, please? Come in. Is that seconded? Yeah. Uh, are there any other nominations? Yeah. Get anyone to second him in my vote on it. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll take uh, we'll take the amendment if you like first. So those in favour of Councillor Brightwell, can I see Brightmore. 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 Uh, one, two, three. And those in favour of Councillor John Hale. <laughs> I thought you were standing up like that. <laughs> okay. So I think, I think we declare uh, Councillor Hale elected as Vice Chairman, but, um, but I'm really pleased that you're interested in being involved, Phil. So uh, I know you've, you've taken a very active part in the constituency committee as well. So um, thank you for that. Um, we've got a few apologies, I think. I've got Councillor John Hale, Councillor Stuart Whittingham, Councillor Matthew Patrick, uh, and someone's writing something down here. Can oh, yeah, Councillor Tony Smith as well. Um, I am aware that, um, that Councillor Hale isn't so well at the moment. Um, he's improving now. Uh, but, he, but yeah, he is improving. And I know Stuart and Matthew, and I presume Tony, have got a work commitment that they, that they can't get out of. So, um, so there are the apologies, as I say, Mike, I know that you need to get away, but thanks for coming along. Um, the next item is that, um, just to let you know that uh, Jerry Ellis, Councillor Ellis has requested that the golf resort be added as an agenda item, um, and we'll probably try and take that as a matter of AOB, but are there any, is there anyone here specifically for the golf resort item? Okay, well, well, we'll try and fit that in probably before question time, I think, maybe. Uh, so we'll try and do that. Appointment of community representatives. Um, and again, um, Jane, do you want to update us on community reps? Thanks, thanks, Chair. Just in terms of um, the committee's um, uh, community representatives, uh, we, there is an opportunity for a, a representative from each of the five wards to sit on the committee. Um, and we've had some of those in place for some time and, and a number have resigned. We've been recruiting for a while now um, and we haven't had that much interest, um, to be honest. So uh, we continue with that process because we would really like people who are interested in, in taking part in the work of the committee to, to come forward. Um, so we're continuing with that. So as it stands, Jackie Hall, who can see to my uh, left, who's uh, been the rep for Hoylake and Mel's ward for uh, since the start of the, uh, since the committee was established, has very kindly uh, agreed to continue while we can to see if we can get more people to come forward and, and take up that role. Um, but I will, we will hopefully have uh, be able to co-opt some new representatives in October. 
anyone is interested, please do get in touch with myself or Helen. Okay. Uh, thanks for that, Jane. And again, thanks to Jackie uh, for kindly continuing to serve. Um, do appreciate it, and I think if there was anyone um, who is the epitome of a community representative in terms of the work you do in Hoylake, uh, at the Hoylake and Mel's Ward, it would be you, Jackie. You do an amazing job for the community and the people of Hoylake. So I'm delighted that you're continuing. So thank you very much for that. Uh, next item I've got is Members' Code of Conduct and Declarations of Interest. Uh, members are asked to consider whether they have any disclosable pecuniary interest and or any other relevant interest in connection with any item on the agenda, and if so, to declare them and state the nature of the interest. Do we have anyone with any interest of those kinds? No? Okay, thank you. Now, the next item I've got on the agenda are the minutes, uh, which are contained in pages 1 to 14. Uh, do you, are we all content with those as, as minutes? Can I move approval of those, Chair? Yeah, of course you can. Is that agreed, agreed. Mike? Yeah, agreed. okay. Thank you, everyone. So thank you for those minutes. We'll sign them as we go along. That's okay. Oh, no, I've got to do it now. Okay. Please slide the weird things at the moment. Do you want to slide that to back? item we've got are the, is the constituency manager's report and that allows me to hand over to Jane to present the report um, which will include presentation of photographs of the rural events funded by the committee to celebrate the Queen's 90th birthday. So uh, Jane, can I ask you to uh, talk to your report please? Thank you Chair. Um, hopefully those who wanted a copy of Sorry, we haven't got enough copies, but these reports are all um, available online. Um, but just in terms of, of my regular progress report, um, this is where I update um, the committee and um, members of the public about um, how the committee's budget um, is being spent, has been spent, and the outcomes of that. Um, the main um, element of the committee's budget is our uh, annual core budget, which is uh, 50,000, um, and that's allocated through a small grants program. Um, and we did that earlier in the year, um, and really good response, more organisations and groups than ever before, more projects than ever before, um, and as part of the process we ask uh, local residents and members of the groups to show their support for project applications, and again, more people got involved in that part of it this, this year, which was fantastic, so uh, nearly 3,000 people actually placed a vote online um, or on a paper um, survey to show which projects they supported and what that what that does is as well as helping us make decisions about uh, make, helps the committee make decisions about which projects to allocate funding it also is a really good source of information about um, the level of support for what's out there and, and people who are involved which is great um, so um, there's a summary in the report of the amount of uh, grants awarded for each ward um, and an appendix to the report which shows um, the individual projects um, we have, do have some money left over from this year and previous years, and that's retained for um, to be spent at the discretion of ward councillors um, on local improvements. So that could be things from bins to um, that, that, that kind of sort of local service improvements. So, and I work collectively with ward councillors to, to spend their money. Spent. Um, next item is a special places project. This was where we've asked local residents to come forward with ideas for new benches in Willow West. Um, this was again was really well received uh, and some really positive coverage in the press and on social media. Um, we got over 30 suggestions, which was a lot more than we could fund with the budget that we had available. Um, but we have, um, working with uh, a panel of members, uh, there is a list of, of 10 priority locations for those benches to be installed. Um, I have to say that due to Helen's hard work in gathering all the cost information together, um, that work should proceed quite quickly. So the list is, is in the report. Um, and at the next meeting of the committee, we should be able to show you some before and after photographs. So that would be really good. Um, but again, thanks to people who got involved in that. Um, patrons lunch small grants. Um, 
We had a small amount of money left over from a previous budget allocation for a project called Love Wirral, um, and that was being used for small grants for uh, parties and events to celebrate Her Majesty the Queen's 90th birthday. A lot of that was already happening, um, some big events, some smaller events, so we wanted to make sure that if people were ha had an idea that they wanted to do something, that they there was a little bit of money there to kind of start that process off. So uh, there's some photographs being showed on the presentation, and we'll put this on the website and we'll um, hopefully put it on YouTube as well so people can see the photographs. But um, some fantastic um, uh, events happen, parties, really well attended. The weather wasn't so great on the Sundays, those of you who were out and about that day know, but, um, and some parties took, took place the week before due to various um, reasons. So some sunny, sunny day pictures on there. Um, uh, but overwhelmingly, everyone who got a grant, and there were uh, they, they're all, all listed in the report across the, all five wards of the constituency. We're really grateful for the support um, and some really, really wonderful feedback about um, people making connections in their own that they might not have done otherwise. So, um, people who've been, you know, housebound, have been brought out to the party, and, and, and just fantastic um, community connections happening. And hopefully, that will stimulate more of the same in the future. So, we'll be keeping in touch with those people who have parties, and hopefully. Um, they'll continue to do um, sort of localised neighbourhood activities. So, as you can see, some really fantastic photographs there. Um, I'm not sure how long this presentation is running for, but I'll, I won't talk to the end of it. We have, if, if those of you who don't know, the council's got a YouTube channel, so we can put presentations and little films online. So we'll do that. Um, there's a fantastic film, Holy Lake of Mel's in Bloom, which I was going to I was going to show, but I Again, that's on YouTube, isn't it, Mike? Um, they had a put there the great day in Queen's Park. Okay, so, so that's patron lunch. Again, thanks to everybody who got involved and, and organised stuff. That's great stuff happening in the constituency. The next uh, budget, um, the next project day is tapping into antisocial behaviour. So we had the committee has got had fifteen thousand to spend on antisocial behaviour initiatives, um, which was allocated last year. So a lot of work's been going on to progress that. Um, some really good work around Neighbourhood Watch, um, which um, has been relaunched in Wirral. So we're, we've got some money available for new signage for new schemes or existing schemes. And also um, feedback has suggested that people are quite keen to look at cold calling initiatives in local areas. So we will hopefully be doing something around that. Um, doing some particular work in Woodchurch um, and a project with um, one of the primary schools there who, who works as collectively with all the other schools on the estate to set up a mentoring project called Little Brothers, which we think will be really interesting, which is about um, giving boys, particularly in years five and six, good role models. So again, all very interesting stuff, and we'll report back on how that's going. Um, next bit of budget is the environmental budget, which was allocated last year. We've used some of this budget for special places, as you'll recall, um, to, to top up the money that we were able to spend on benches. Um, this hasn't progressed as quickly as we would have liked, just sheerly it's very difficult to get people together to discuss and also it's quite difficult to identify those what spots in, in, in the area. Um, so based on kind of local knowledge and, and conversations, I think possibly the best way to approach that with, with the agreements of the committee is to look at um, the sh key shopping and retail areas in the constituency and I've listed uh, some there in the report and there might be others. Um, but actually to do some work with local businesses because things like the nighttime economy and um, takeaways tends to be more litter and, and more issues. So that might be something we could do a bit of an audit around spend that money. So I'm hoping that the committee is supportive of, of that approach. Um, road safety budget, again we've got some um, funding for localised road safety schemes um, and that work is ongoing. Uh, we're waiting for some information from highways and regeneration um, teams about uh, feasibility and cost into the various schemes, so we'll be able to report back on that at the next meeting. Um, so the, the, the key um, point for the committee is, is to support the environmental budget approach, which hopefully will cover the whole constituency, but also will be localised, um, and offer to notice the progress set out in the report. Okay, uh, thank you Jane and, um, and Helen, of course. Uh, for the amazing amount of work that you do and the, uh, the breadth of work that you do from um, uh, supporting um, community groups to um, working with schools and so on to come up with some of the innovations around that.
social behaviour, which I know was something I think we were all keen to look at doing different things and seeing the impact. And I think the Little Brothers Project, which I know you're particularly uh, keen on and impressed with the results, and fills that bill. So could I, I, could I just ask if anyone on the committee got any questions would like to ask Jane around that? Uh, yes, David, does it? No, no, Phil's got one. Oh, sorry. Okay, I thought you were <laughs> waving no, 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 your hand at me. Right, Phil. Um, just a simple switch, you say it's not a bad thing. Um, just two points, Jane, thank you for the report, it's excellent. Um, but on the Neighbourhood Watch scheme, we've been hearing about this for a while. I just wondered when it was going to kick off, because we've got some spots within this ward in particular that could really do with having that established. For example, Fisher's Lane, we've got kind of bikes going up and down that road now, we've got some lot of noise, you've got some anti social behaviour in Ridgewood Park and around the um, Children's Centre. And then there's also the Pentagon Hotel. Um, getting people breaking windows there quite often. It'd be good to know more of how it's going to be advertised and how many people can get involved. Uh, second, if you don't you know, mind, the environment budget. It sounds like a really interesting idea uh, to have it focused on the kind of main shopping areas within each world. But I'm mindful that whilst we've got a few shops in Pensby, it's more of an urban swarm than perhaps West Kirby, which has got a definite centre. I don't want this money to be, sorry guys, funneled into the areas where there are more shops. Is there going to be a set amount for each ward? If so, are there going to be uh, rules around how that money can be spent? Is Pensby likely to be restricted? Well, can I, can I try can I try and deal with that first? And then uh, Jane can uh, carry on. I, I, I think um, a bit on further really, I think, that comment. Um, bearing in mind, I think the committee has um, when we were doing antisocial behaviour, we were um, spending the antisocial behaviour money. We were keen to make sure that, that those resources were targeted into the area of, of greatest need, and that was clearly up to. We didn't turn around and say, oh, well, we're not going to spend all that money. And so we were actually quite keen to spend it. So I, I think for me, I like the idea that Jane has <coughs> made out there in terms of if people haven't come forward, then utilising it. Um, within the, uh, the shopping areas. I think it will be the schemes and the issues that come forward that will generate where they need support. And I would hope that will be the approach that would be taken there. Um, I don't know if you've got anything you want to add, Jane, in terms of where we are with Neighbourhood Watch and so on and so forth. In terms of uh, Neighbourhood Watch, um, you're right, Councillor Brighton, well, that's been something we've been talking about for uh, some time. Um, we've um, rec there's re uh, recently been a new appointment to the role of um, World Neighbourhood Watch Coordinator, which is a voluntary role um, who works closely with Merseyside Police, and that's really provided the impetus for us to be able to take that work, work forward. Um, it's, it's one of the, it's, 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 um, it could be a really fantastic scheme, we want to do some really good um, leaflets and posters around that, so that, that is being looked at now. Um, and we did an event in uh, Woodchurch High last week, which was um, we were inviting um, neighbourhood watch scheme coordinators and, coordinators and people interested in being a neighbourhood watch coordinator to come and find out about the latest initiatives. So, whilst work has progressed at a worldwide level, now we're going to roll it out at the constituency level. So, I think we've laid, laid some good foundations there with that. But, um, and in terms of the specifics around the Pensby issues, I know we were at an event on Woodchurch this morning. Um, which was uh, looking at um, scram the issue of scramble bikes on the estate, um, and there was a, 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 a the PCC, the Police Crime Crime Commission, on the estate this morning. So there's some posters actually out there around uh, an operation that's currently ongoing it's for people to to encourage people to report if there are issues in the locality, specifically around scramble bikes. So make sure we've got some of those posters. Gotcha. Yeah, can I just come back on that very very quickly? Yeah, cool. Thank you, um, not entirely certain, so I'll just, I'll just talk quite loud. Um, <laughs> with regards to money being put onto the streets where the shops, I appreciate what you're saying, Chair, I, I totally do. But when we did that with the anti-social behaviour money, there was also money left over which could be distributed to other areas. Yeah. What I'm asking is that we're trying to secure, make sure some of that money is going to go to Pensby, which has got a smaller high street than like, Greasby, 
Bethany Westcott over the long day? Oh, well, I, I, I think this is all, but well, I'll speak by some globally anyway. So, uh, I think we can absolutely <coughs> reassure you that yes, um, uh, when we talk about um, the uh, shopping centres, we're talking about shopping centres across the constituency, um, and Pensby absolutely falls into to that, and certainly Andrew wouldn't forgive me if it, it didn't, I wouldn't have thought. So, uh, so Andrew Gardner in the audience there. So in terms, of, in terms of that, let's be clear that yes, um, this money will be spent across the constituency, but clearly it's going to, you're going to end up getting more money spent when there's more shops. But, uh, but there was no intention at all to say certain parts of the borough would get nothing. That was without parts of the constituency would get nothing. That I think hopefully well, you know as well enough to know that we would never, I'd never dream of doing anything like that. Quite the reverse, in fact. So, uh, so I think that's what we're going to do. If you're, con if everyone is content with that approach, what we tend to do in these sort of circumstances is to pull together a, a bit of a panel to discuss. Some of those issues to make that's certainly what we did with the uh, anti-social behaviour money and i'm sure we could do something um, around this too um, i suppose what would be a good idea is um, we did allocate that anti-social behaviour money uh, and i think we did promise that we'd come back and have a bit of a review so if we're putting a panel together um, to look at how we will uh, how we will make your recommendation come alive um, around the environmental budget. Perhaps we should also think about bringing the anti-social behaviour group together just to evaluate what's what's what and where we go, particularly with the uh, neighbourhood watch initiative. Yeah, is everyone broadly content with that as an approach? Yep, yeah. yeah. I'm struggling to see something because Colin's leading forward, so I can't <laughs> see everyone down the down the. <coughs> is everyone content with that as an approach? Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for your report uh, and Helen for the work that the, the team do. And just to be clear, we have endorsed our approach to the environmental budget. Yes. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. So if we move on to the next item, and I think the next item is about the, um, the constituency budget allocation. Um, so we're going to um, ask the committee to discuss and agree the recommendation. You're going to introduce this for yeah, us, Jane. Yeah, <coughs> okay. um, Thanks, Chair. Um, yes, but the next report is is the constituency budget for this year, which has um, been allocated, which is our core budget of 50,000. Um, I've separated it out from the main report because um, obviously it's a new budget and um, there may be uh, comments and queries about uh, the approach. Um, as I said, in in terms of the previous report, for the last three years, um, the core budget has been utilised for a small grants programme, which we call the Rural West Community Fund, um, which I think is now quite <coughs> recognisable um, grant fund in the area. Um, and we do that on the basis of a maximum grant of 1,000 for each project, um, and on the basis of 10,000 uh, per uh, ward. Um, so um, just in terms of um, how, how how much of an impact those projects have. Um, it's, it's sometimes we don't always explore this, but um, if we we did a bit of an analysis of, of um, what the total project costs were, so we might give a thousand pounds to a project, but it's it's actually cost three or four thousand pounds to actually influence. Um, and looking at that, if, just doing a quick analysis, the grants that we give out as a committee um, are usually doubled in value. So so that actually means that things happen that might not ordinarily happen that have greater value. Um, and I think we need to do more work in terms of looking at the social value of, of, of the grants that, that, that we actually um, uh, allocate as a committee. Um, in terms of the community fund for the coming year, which in broadly the, the, the recommendations and um, the discussions for the committee is whether they want to continue with that broad approach, um, we think there's some ways we could improve that if that's the case. Um, the first one, three point one, is the timetable. Um, it's always tends to be at the back end of the year, sort of going Christmas into into sort of February, March time, which we think is quite. Uh, it hasn't worked particularly well in some respects, particularly when we're trying to organise networking events or people to come together. It's 
you know, the late nights and, you know, summertime is a much, or springtime is a much better time to try and have those sorts of events. So we're proposing that the fund actually reopens in July, which is quite soon given we gave out the grants um, earlier in the year uh, with decisions by November 2016. Uh, Helen's put up a slide there with a very broad timetable um, for those groups in the audience who, who, who bid in for this. That might be quite helpful. I've got some copies of that. But we'll, we'll make that widely uh, available. Um, so you can see we would open that towards the end of July if the panel's in, in agreement. Um, we think another thing we can do more of is, is, that I, is, is what I've just talked about um, in terms of raising awareness of the committee's contribution to local activities through this grant fund um, and promoting that better and promoting the work of groups better. Um, also we think um, because a lot of projects, a lot of groups work across the wall boundaries in the constituency and people don't necessarily recognise that and, and, and why should they if they work with groups from uh, across different wards. Um, this is for example a quite a particular issue in Hoylake and Mells and West Kirby where the boundary, wall boundary doesn't sit where you probably think it, it would because it's um, runs through West Kirby Town Centre. With that sort of split of 10,000 wards, sometimes I think we need to let groups work across those boundaries. So I think in terms of a, new, a revised process, we can make that a bit easier for people. Um, and just to sort of tighten up the process a little bit. Um, and then what we'd like to do as well to evaluate the impact of previous year's funding is to produce a short film in the next few months um, and get groups to get involved in showing us what they've been doing in their local area. Again, that we can show here and also circulate widely. So there are a few things we'd like to do to enhance the, the community funds. Should the committee agree, that's the approach they wish to take in future. Um, and there, that's the basis of uh, my recommendations, which is that the committee agrees to continue with the broad framework, um, which is ten thousand per ward allocated through small grants, and that we commit to the improvements that I've outlined. That's, no, that's <laughs> quite all right. Um, okay. Thoughts, suggestions, and ideas. Um, is there anything just, they'd like to add about that? Phil? Just a point to... Hang on. No. It's just a point of clarity, Chair. When it says that um, applications can now go across wall, yeah. would that mean that the app application would be 1,000 or would it melt would be two? So it would allow for larger schemes across the two walls. No, that wasn't the intention. It would be still a maximum grant of a thousand per project, just recognising that the beneficiaries maybe might be from across a number of wards. But what we will do behind the scenes is make sure that that's reflected in the calculations as to how much money is spent in each ward. That's so that we can, yeah, yeah it, it, won't, it won't affect the amount per ward that is spent. Yeah, and again, just to be fair, as a, as a West Kirby and first formal councillor, um, <coughs> There's something that's benefiting the people of West Kirby, that's the main thing. Uh, to impose a kind of, in some cases, an artificial um, line on a on a map that might prevent a really good uh, good initiative that's going to impact people across the, the pieces seems a, a little bit uh, bureaucratic. It, it, it's who's being served and who gains really who benefits. It's it's the most important thing I think we would we would undoubtedly all say and, and we can all think of the boundaries of our water where there's that kind of rather uh, potentially a, 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 an artificial gap um, because after all it's drawn up by the boundary commission not by ordinary humans so um, to, to get a particular effect so we've all got examples around that I'm sure and so uh, when these schemes come forward again I'm sure Jane and Helen will look at those, and we will again try and keep um, try and keep as close as possible to organisation based in a particular ward. But again, it depends or depends on who the um, who within the community is benefiting and probably where the from. Jeff, read me. Just a little point of clarification in that final sent sentence of paragraph three point three. Um, Maximum of two projects, is that two projects per round of applications? And also is a limited number of applications you can make over a period of years? Uh, an app 
absolutely no limit to the amount of applications over and over, cumulatively over a number of years. Um, but what we, what we saw in the last round was that a number of organisations had bid in for quite a lot of projects and they probably didn't need to, to do four application forms if they'd have done it slightly differently. They probably could have done the same with two. Um, that's not to say that there aren't umbrella organisations that um, oversee a number of applications. So um, as we always try to be, it's about being a bit flexible but, but trying to put a little bit of a cap on you know, people doing too many application forms when they don't need to. So with the time table, we've put a lot more time in for um, going back to groups to ask them to work with them on this. So we're hopefully, hopefully by doing that, um, we can iron out. I think it's unfair to groups to have to do three or four applications when <coughs> they don't have to. So, um, but, but yeah, but no cap on cumulatively over, over years, absolutely. Yeah, okay. And um, yeah, there's also, I don't know, colleagues might, uh, might not agree with this, but I always feel a bit um, disappointed if one or two groups are consistently hoovering up all the, all the grants, really. I like, you know, lots of new areas to come in and with new ideas, new innovations and so on. But on the other hand, there are other things that have been great. So the Festival of First, which is something that we first started, what was helped to be supported to be started through this grants program. And actually, if you look at it now, it's a, it's a fantastic kind of festival that's, uh, that, that, that goes on in the world. It's gone from strength to strength. So lots of good things and good ideas that have come through from this. So uh, I'm still not altogether sure the difference between uh, networking events in October and networking events in no, I'll, take your, nice. I'll take your <laughs> word that it's that warmer yeah. in October and people are more likely to come out than, uh, than if it was in March, but there uh, you go. So uh, let's, let's give it a try and, uh, and see how it goes. So recommendations as per the report, is everyone content with that as, a, as an approach? And we can endorse those recommendations, yeah? Okay, so, all right, again, I'm, uh, I'm struggling to see all my um, GFI colleagues are. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, great, that's lovely. Thank you everybody. Um, what I think might be a good idea now, um, if the committee are prepared to, be, to indulge me, uh, is to ask for David to give us a bit of an update on the uh, golf resort, if that's okay. And then follow the golf resort, then we've got the community questions. I'm at the front with no name, uh, David Armstrong, the Assistant Chief Executive. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of David Ball, who came to see you in February, who's the Senior Manager for this project. Um, the first point to make is that all the, all the comments and feedback from the public consultation, they've all been published on the Council's website, they've all been anonymised, not by anonymised, but they're on there, and all the comments have been fed back to the Joint Venture Group who are doing the scheme. Um, there's been some brief contact in the last few days with the joint venture group, very brief contact, where they have said that they still wish to proceed with the development of the project. They feel that the, the referendum vote doesn't alter their view, that they still want to work on the project. What happens now is that there'll be a period of what looks like inactivity to, to you, and, and, um, because there'll be a technical period of about 12 months now while they prepare their scheme and bring it forward. Um, there will be continued contact between the venture group and the relevant council officers. And there'll be some careful steps taken to make sure that the appropriate boundaries are in place between those officers and any who subsequently view a planning application. So it's envisaged that in about 12 months time, assuming the venture group continue, they will bring forward a proposal that will be put out to public consultation again. And then after that, subject to them still continuing with the process, there will be a planning application submitted which will um, again be subject to the usual public consultation. So it, it will be a fairly quiet period over the next few months. They've got a lot of work to do, a lot of technical assessments to do, a lot of background work to do, a lot of development of their scheme to talk with their funders and to talk with the other partners in their scheme. Once, it, once they're at a place where that comes forward again, they'll be in the field of public consultation. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, David, thank you for the update. And again, Jerry, thanks for reminding us that we promised that we would have regular updates on the golf resort. 
Um, again, you know, there's no point in me repeating what David has said, but fundamentally, the uh, issue is the uh, approval of principles, I understand yeah. it, a uh, preferred status, should I say, continues. as continues, and now it's a question of <coughs> uh, doing all the work, funding cocktails, all that sort of stuff, and so on and so forth, all that technical stuff that goes on in the background, and no doubt there will be lots of stuff about checking for newts and types of grass yeah. and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff one presumes. Uh, Geoffrey, you've indicated? Yeah, just to ask David, um, he's mentioned the 12 months again. Has the timetable slipped because we were sort of talking about 12 months, three months ago? <coughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I think if I go to the note that David prepared, I'll just read the actual sentence. It says, once the technical work has been completed, in approximately 12 months, the council will organise further public consultation. I think um, I'm, I wasn't present at the last meeting. That's the current time scale. If that's an extension of what was said to you previously, that's the current time scale that we envisage. Okay. Um, do you want to, Jerry? You want to? Yeah. yeah, of course you may. Yeah, just a couple of uh, issues on this. Um, I just wanted to try to make sure we could alert the other ward, the other ward, the other wards in the in the West Wirral, because loads of in Hoylake ward this event, or I think it is anyway, it is. It's going to probably affect all the other wards in the area much more than it's going to affect our own ward at Hoylake. We're going to get a nice new railway crossing, hopefully, a way out, uh, out avoiding the railway crossing. But the traffic and many other aspects are going to affect the other parts of our ward, of our constituency very much indeed. So I'd just like to alert you all to the fact that I think this is a problem for a massive for us all to be concerned. The only major worry I've got about Hoylake Ward is the east end of the ward, which is Mel's, uh, because poor old Heron Road seems to be sliced off as a sort of a annexed part, and I think the poor people in Heron Road, as it stands at the moment, are going to have a terrible time if this thing goes ahead. And I am concerned. All, well, I've been on the council now, what do you believe, for about nearly 20 years. I was only 11 when I started, obviously, you can see by the look of me. But um, in the good old days, we, all these issues as it came up, councillors, we used to be consulted on a regular basis. All the time we would be being consulted on what's going on. All we're getting now, I'm no, I have great respect to you, David. Uh, all we're getting now is being told, oh, don't worry, just look, come, come back in 12 months and we'll tell you where we're going. It was actually 12 months uh, uh, last January as well, by the way, so it has, as Jeffrey has said, it has actually gone back quite a long way. So it is a matter that you should all be concerned about, not just Hoylake and Mel's Ward. So let's see how it goes. Thank you, Jeffrey. Jeff. Okay. Um, thanks for that, Jerry. I, I, um, clearly, uh, there has been a public consultation already uh, where views and views have been collated. Clearly, the technical work that is going on will determine some of those uh, concerns or issues that you uh, have alluded to. But as well as being a, um, um, it's like any change, I suppose, for with new possibilities and possibly risks, but with that comes opportunities. So there will be opportunities across uh, Hoylake and Malswood, I'm sure, um, and certainly West Kirby Thurston and around other wards across the across the borough, uh, and particularly in Wirral West. So, so yes, I'm, I'm, I, I don't doubt your, um, your sincerity and commitment to uh, the people of Hoylake and Mells and the concerns that may have been expressed, but I think there are very clearly, in order to ensure that, there is, that everyone has an opportunity to comment and, and see what is really in place, that's the processes are there to ensure that. But I think we should, shouldn't um, take our eyes from the prize in those terms, in terms of employment, in terms of economic regeneration, in terms of, um, in terms of a, a, another destination in, in Hoylake and West Kirby and Mells and Wirral West more generally. Um, and as I say, particularly to me, employment and about the opportunity for young people to to get jobs and, and, and that economic activity. So, uh, so yeah, so there, as with everything, there's threats, but there's also opportunities. 
Eddie, did you indicate you wanted to say something? Yeah. Just one quick one, if, if I may. I'd probably shout louder okay. than that. Okay. <coughs> I'm a councillor for Hoy Lake and West Kirby. Mel's. And yeah. Mel's, which is inclusive. It. And I sit on planning. So I've got to be a little bit careful. I will not commit myself one way or other. I'll listen to everything that's going on. But don't expect me, as the councillor for Hoy Lake, to say yay or nay. I will wait for everything to be presented to me on the day if I'm still sitting on planning and I will make that decision. Don't expect me at the present moment, not knowing exactly what's going on, to make a decision because I will not do that. I will listen to everything that's going because the simple reason is if and when it ever comes to planning, I will have to take a back seat and say, I'm sorry, I made a decision before the day. Yeah. So I will be sitting back basically saying I'll listen to everything that's going on but I will not make a decision one way or the other until the day it is actually a plan. And, and, and I think everyone, well, but certainly all the councillors, understand and appreciate your situation that our planning committee is a quasi judicial committee and therefore it is absolutely imperative that every member on that committee works on the basis of the uh, evidence as presented to that committee. So it's, uh, it's very important that you do that, so I appreciate that. Yes, Jackie? I'd just like to say there isn't an item here tonight for the community reps to say anything, and I don't particularly want one, but had I been asked, I did want to say, and I have been asked to say by a lot of residents in Hoylake, the silent majority, who have decided that they, like uh, Eddie, who's on the planning committee, are not prepared to go one way or the other until they actually see the plans. Mm -hmm because most of the residents of Hoylake would be absolutely delighted if we get a new road and those huge wagons which rock the houses and the shops going through and then cause havoc going over the railway station. If that is prevented, the residents of Hoylake would be delighted as one aspect of it. So, they, you know, a lot of people are keeping quiet, although they would love the golf resort until a later date. You can't say that without a referendum. Uh, how, how can you say that? I, well, I think the point was made. This is a, a meeting held in public as opposed to a public meeting, and we're getting very close. You'd be delighted to hear to the public question time. So, if you've got views about referendum of any type, I'm sure we'll be able to take that. Um, conscious, David, you indicated, but Phil's been uh, trying to get in for some time. So, it may be something similar to what David's about to say. I'm just mindful that I too am on the planning committee and we're discussing some of that may be coming to planning. Mm -hmm. So just declaring that and saying that I too am certainly restricted to that. Yeah. Okay, David? I think briefly all I want to as a long standing member of the planning committee for 16 years, I endorse exactly what Eddie has said that we need to wait and see what is actually being proposed before we decide which way we're going to go. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. as with the EU recommendum, there's been some appalling. Uh, scare stories going around which have no basis of, in fact at all we'll and to listen to those one. is a dangerous situation to do. I would rather wait until we see exactly what is being proposed, exactly what comes to the planning committee. Mm -hmm. I have not made up my mind either way. I will make up my mind as and when the information comes forward in a way that can be properly assimilated and we can take proper information into account rather than scare stories. Thank you, Chair. And, and, and I think the same applies for what I said about uh, Eddie, that is absolutely <coughs> the right thing to do in terms of protecting the council's uh, interest and the people of Wales' interest. So, um, so, Jerry, you're not on the planning committee, so you're entitled to say what you think, and I'm not on the planning committee, and I'm entitled to say what I think.